Alright, so SRV was pretty good at playing blues guitar, and one of the signature characteristics of his lead playing style was his use of two notes that he'd often add to position one of the minor pentatonic, specifically on the high E string. So if this is position one of the F sharp minor pentatonic, these are the two notes that he'd add in on the high E string. These two notes are called a 9 and flat 9, and for you to get something out of this lesson, you don't necessarily need to understand why they're called that, so if you don't, keep watching anyway. What I've learned from studying his playing over the years is that there are two ways in which he would typically phrase these notes, and in my new blues improvisation book, I refer to these as Stevie Ray Vaughan's microphrases. So here's microphrase 1, and here's microphrase 2. In microphrase one, you begin by picking the note that's called the nine, then the root note followed by a hammer on and pull off to the flat nine, which is just one fret higher than the root note. And that's it. In microphrase two, you start by picking the root note and then perform a very quick hammer on to the nine, which is two frets higher. You then pick the flat nine and pull off to the root. Now that quick hammer on from root to ninth is what's known as a grace note. A grace note is one that doesn't exactly get its own rhythmic real estate in the bar. It's not long enough to be a 16th note or even a 32nd note. It's more borrowing time from the note that comes right after it. So in this case, it's the root note that's the grace note and it's just borrowing a tiny slice of time from the nine, the note that you're hammering onto. So without the grace note, that phrase would sound like this. But add it in and it arguably sounds better. Now let's hear these microphrases in a musical context. I've got two licks to show you that use each one separately. So here's the first. Now let's hear that slowed down and I'll add in some fretboard diagrams so that you can follow along at home. And here's the second lick using microphrase two. And again, let's hear that slow. So the next time you listen to Stevie Ray Vaughan, see if you can notice when he uses these little microphrases in his licks. It's such a signature move and one of the many things that made up his highly influential playing style. Microphrase number one appears in quite a few licks in the song Texas Flood, which is what I played in the intro to the video. Something like that anyway. So maybe start there, start with that song and take note of other places in Texas Flood where he uses these micro phrases. Now, for the legends that are still watching this video, I have a gift for you in the description box, which is right underneath the video player. If you'd like to learn how to move beyond the minor pentatonic prison that so many aspiring blues players find themselves stuck in for years or even decades, I have a one hour long blues improvisation masterclass available to watch for free. Just click the first link in the description box, pop in your email address so I know where to send it and you'll be given instant access to this free resource. As you can see from the reviews on screen, it has made quite a big impact already on a number of blues guitarists who watch my channel. And again, it's literally zero dollars. So why not check it out and see if it's worth the hype. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more and I'll see you again soon.